Hello, welcome to the second video in this series of videos looking at inverse trig functions and their derivatives. In the previous video, we looked at arc sine of x. In this video, we'll look at arc cosine of x. Now, it could be written with the minus 1 in the exponent spot, but that could be easily confused for the exponent, and it's not that at all. It's not the reciprocal of cosine. It is the inverse of cosine. So I'll use the word arc in front instead. Now, cosine function is not invertible unless we restrict the domain. You see, it has to pass both a horizontal and a vertical vertical line test, and uh, it's not going to pass any kind of a horizontal line test. And so what we're going to do is restrict to only look at an interval of x values where it passes both of them. And we have decided that the one that we should use, that everyone would be using the same one, will be from 0 to pi. And so all angles that go into cosine, for it to be invertible, the input, the domain, is going to be restricted to only be those guys, 0 to pi. Now the range, of course, is 1 to minus 1. And so that window of 0 to pi and minus 1 to 1, that window will make the function invertible and then we can switch the domain and switch the range where the input values are going to be the actual um, negative one to one and the output values are going to be those angles so the graph will be reflected about the line y equals x and it'll look like that that's the graph of our cosine and so we have um the way they they cancel each other is if you have the the cosine x inside of arc cosine, just like with e and log, you know, they cancel their inverse functions. You'll just get the x. Other way around, if you have the cosine of the arc cosine, they cancel, and you'll just get the x. And so, let's look at trying to evaluate this function at three different input values. So we should only look at the upper part of the unit circle because we're only using angles that are between 0 and pi. We should be focusing in on the x values because those are the cosine values. And so if somebody asks you to find the arc cosine of negative a half, you're going to scan the top half of the unit circle to find the x value being equal to negative 1 half. And you report the angle back as in radians. Find the angle that when plugged into sine gives a negative one half or cosine. Find the angle when plugged into cosine gives a negative one half. The answer is two pi over three. Find the angle when plugged into cosine and gives root three over two. The answer is pi over six. Find the angle when plugged into cosine that gives a negative one. The answer is pi. All right, so you know how to evaluate the function. Good. Only use those angles, though. And so now let's do a derivative question involving arc cosine and the chain rule. Well, let's first figure out, sorry, what is the derivative of arc cosine? Now we have this formula that tells us that if we know the original function and its derivative, then we can know the inverse function's derivative, so long as this um, this exists and is not equal to zero in the denominator there. And so our original function is cosine x, and its derivative is negative sine of x. So our job is to take this inverse function, arc cosine x, and find its derivative. So this formula says that you do 1 over the, the original function's derivative but not evaluated at x, evaluated at the inverse function. So I'll do one over negative sine, not of x, one over negative sine of arc cosine of x. Okay, and we'll use the Pythagorean theory, um, um, Pythagorean identity again, the fact that sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So the sine, squared is going to be 1 minus the cosine squared. 
So the sine of x will be the square root of that. And so I'm going to take that equation, replace the x with arc cosine. The sine of arc cosine of x is equal to the square root of 1 minus the cosine of arc cosine of x squared. And I just brought the minus 1 up to the numerator. All right, great. Well, the cosine of arc cosine, they cancel each other out, and you just get x. So this is why the derivative of arc cosine is going to be negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. No trig involved at all in the derivative. Okay? So if your function is arc cosine x, your derivative is negative 1 over root 1 minus x squared. What if your function is arc cosine of some other function? That's okay. Negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus that function squared times the derivative of that function. Let's see it in action. I have the arc cosine of 1 over root x. I'm interested in its derivative at 4. So, according to the formula, we should do negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus that function squared. But we should not stop there. We need to multiply that by the derivative of that function chain rule. We say, what is 1 over root x's derivative? Well, you treat root x like a half power. Bring it up because it's in the denominator. So, x to the negative 1 half is going to be the function on the inside is derivative is negative one half x to the negative three halves. And so that's what's going to go down there in our function multiplied by our, our first part there. Well, let's go ahead and square, right? One over root x and we square that. We just get one over x. So we'll go ahead and replace that. We'll have a negative one over the square root of 1 minus 1 over x. And then another way to write that negative 3 halves power is to put it on the bottom of the positive 3 halves power. So there we go. Our job, plug in a 4. Replace all the x's with 4's. 1 minus 1 fourth is 3 quarters. The square root of 3 fourths is going to be root 3 over 2. Uh, 4 to the 3 halves is like taking the square root of 4 and cubing it. So it's 2 cubed. That's an 8. All right, great. So we have negative 1 over the square root of 3 quarters times a negative 1 over 2 times 8. Well, the square root of 3 quarters is root 3 over 2. So we'll flip that and have it as 2 over root 3, and it's times negative 1 over 16. So the 2 and the 16 can cancel to be an 8. And there's your answer. The two negatives make it a positive. Our cosine of 1 over root x is derivative at 4 is 1 over 8 root 3, multiple choice, letter E. Okay, so we've had a full video on arc cosine. And we're now going to move into our last video, which is a full video on arc tangent. My name is Nikai Rimmer. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below. I'm happy to help you. Please reach out for, um, to me if you need any help. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.